Happy Wednesday. I hope everybody has had an amazing first week of 2021. Um, I hope things are going smooth and all is good in the world <laughs> for you. Um, let me just check to make sure before we get rolling into the live today that I've got my volume and everything going and then we'll get started. So hold on just a minute. Let me just double check this. Um, and for those of you who are joining me live, um, give me a heart, give me a thumbs up, let me know that you're here. Whoops, <laughs> there goes my phone. Um, there we go. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Looks like we are good. I may look over to my left every once in a while because that's where I have my phone and sometimes I can see comments there better than I can see them over here. Um, so anyway, um, hello. Uh, yeah, again, my name is Lori Fisher with Rethink Home Interiors. Rethink is a full service real estate staging company based in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And um, we've been in business for coming up on 10 years this year, which is crazy. And these weekly training sessions are all about how I can pay it forward to the staging industry. When I first started out, we didn't have a whole lot um, of, you know, a lot of training around the continued marketing and growth of the business. And so I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way. Um, so I just want to share with all of you the things that I have learned. So today we we're talking about a really provocative topic. Um, we are talking about how to charge more and still keep booking clients. And this is a big one. I see a lot of people talking about charging and rates and all of that over on our um, home staging Facebook pages. And so I thought it was it would be a really great topic for me to dive into. So um, by the end of the training today, you're going to know you're going to learn this new concept that um, was game changing for me and something I was doing in my business and I didn't even realize it was a thing. So I wasn't talking about it. And I'm going to share with you what that concept is and how you can begin to incorporate it into the marketing of your business so that you can increase your price. Um, and continue to book clients in a way that feels like really in alignment. Because I think for a lot of us, it can be very uncomfortable when we start out um, our businesses and maybe we set our rates and we really didn't understand the way to set our rates um, to accommodate a growing business. And we've got to change those rates and it feels very uncomfortable going back to maybe your established client base. Oh, hello, everybody starting to pop in. Hi, I'm sorry, I did not get the email out today. I actually had a glitch in my system and I, I actually had it scheduled for um, like PM. <laughs> So the first to first email of the year, sorry, did not come out to you. Um, but anyway, if you're joining live, give me a heart, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you're here and let me know if there is something today that resonates with you by giving me, you know, a thumbs up as well. I want to know what is hitting for people so that I continue to bring you that kind of content. So let me just kind of lay out the scene for you. I think this is so important. And what I see over on those home staging blogs when people are talking about pricing, Pricing is really sensitive and, you know, in the beginning, we don't actually know how we should be setting our prices, like I just mentioned. So we may get to a point in our business where we have to increase those rates, go back to existing clients and basically ask them for more money, right? Which is kind of uncomfortable. They've gotten used to the way that you operate and how much you charge and it's, you know, kind of it makes us queasy inside. The other thing that we confront is, you know, sometimes we are an established business and we have a market where newer stagers are entering. And I see new stagers entering the market every day, which is so awesome. I love that we have more people in this world helping sellers do, you know, create the results that we can help them create. It's amazing. But when you have new stagers, again, they are setting their rates based not really on knowing what it actually costs to run a business. They may not even understand their true value in the whole real estate process yet to know that they can actually charge a premium price for things like their staging consultations, their vacant stagings, things like that. So you may be an established business and you may start to have more competition in your area that is charging less. And as a lot of us know, it very often feels like we are being you know, shopped for on price. Um, it's kind of like the Walmart effect or the Amazon effect. You can get it you know, done cheaper, faster and all of that. And so sometimes people apply that same model to our businesses. And quite frankly, realtors um, and investors who are many times our prime you know, clients, 
their margins are really tight. And so they have to be very cost conscious about how much they spend in their marketing budget for all of you know, for services like ours. So they are price sensitive, right? So we can kind of confront that. Um, and then we worry that we're going to lose out on jobs in the end, right? Whether it's with an established client or new clients may not hire us if our pricing seems too high and out of out of reach for people, right? So, ooh, hello, I see people starting to join in. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, for whatever reason, I can't see it on my computer screen. So it's not until I look down that I realize we've got some people joining in. So those are kind of the things. I don't know for any of you who are joining, if any of that hits with you, I'd love to hear what it is, what resonates with you around that. Um, because I've seen all of these, I felt all of these at certain points in my business, and I've seen all of these happening kind of on those Facebook group discussions. Um, and the, the challenge is if we don't do anything about this, we remain stuck, right? So we don't increase our rates, which is not good for us. Maybe we don't land the job because if we try raising our rates and we don't do it in a strategic way, like I'm going to teach you in a little bit, um, we might lose out on the, those jobs and we don't know how to sell that service. Uh, and then we struggle to stay in business ultimately. It's, this is not an inexpensive business to run as you grow. As I've talked about in past trainings, our business model isn't very scalable when it's just a team of one. We can only get so far with that. So in order to grow a business that enables us to bring in revenue of you know six figures, if that's your goal, um, really takes a village. And it takes more people and it takes more payroll and it takes more infrastructure in order to get there. Um, so you know, we want to be able to raise our rates according to what needs to support that growing business. We need to know how to do it. So I'm going to share a little anecdote from my early days in business and just what I I did without even realizing it. When I first started out in business, what I was taught to do by the person who helped me build my website because I was supposed to be blogging and all of that good stuff was listen to my clients, listen to their pain points, observe what's going on for them so that I could create blog content to you know help those you know kind of pain points, help people get through those things via my blog. Well, what I decided to do was that was all well and fine, but a lot of times in the beginning of my business, I would partner with a realtor and the realtor was the client, you know, who was helping me book jobs with their clients. So their, their sellers weren't necessarily reading my blog. The realtor was, but the sellers weren't. And so I noticed that whenever I, in the beginning would do a, what I call a styling eval or a staging consultation, and I would recommend things like styling the coffee table and, you know, like, let's clear the coffee table, let's restyle it. And if I were in an appointment where there was a lot to do and I couldn't, I couldn't always give like a hands on, oh, here's how you do it. I would look at the, the listing photos and they would have cleared the coffee table, but then maybe put, I was, was famous for in the beginning, people would style like specifically kitchen tables with fresh flowers. That was all the new, the, the rage back in 2011 was put fresh flowers on your kitchen table. Well, fresh flowers, the way the average consumer does them, don't photograph very well. They kind of, they don't look great. And so I was like, I've got to come up with a quick way that I can help a client figure out how to do this, even if I'm not there on hand to do this work for them. So what I started to do was send after the appointment, when I would send my notes from the, um, the evaluation appointment was I would send them styling guides. I created how to style a coffee table, how to um, style a mantle, how to style your kitchen table. And I just started sending these to our clients. And then as I grew my portfolio over time, I sent them a link to our photo gallery so that they could see how we had done vacant staging work, like kind of best practices to give them ideas for how to do those things. So I never mentioned this to my realtors. I really never talked about it with my sellers. I just did it. I thought it was something helpful. And then I took a training three years ago with Russell Brunson. And if you do not know Russell Brunson, I would definitely look into uh, Russell Brunson. He is quite amazing. Um, and Russell Brunson talks about something called a value stack. And I realized what I was actually doing was a value stack. I just hadn't talked about it at all. So, and he talks about how powerful this thing called a value stack is. So what I basically was doing was bundling all of that into my service and giving it away for free and not talking about it. 
but a value stack is really quite different and a very, very powerful marketing tool. Now, a few weeks ago, I talked about how to create a value ladder, which is a progression of services from something like a very low um, price point offer that doesn't maybe include you. Maybe it's a, a guide or a, a checklist or something like that. And then working them up through, you know, a, a series of price point adjustments. A value stack is actually adding more goodies into an existing service so that you're, you're giving the service. So in our case, a styling evaluation was being given, but the value stack was that I was also including checklists and guides and planners. Never talked about it, but that's what I was doing. So, so what he talks about is how we need to open up those little, um, those little packages and pieces of what we have in our overall service and begin to, to promote our service that way. So let me just share, I know it sounds like a little confusing, but I wanna share a little bit about how that can look for you. So yes, the Rus Russell Brunson value stack, thanks. <laughs> so it's almost like an infomercial, right? This is a really good way to think about it. In an infomercial, you might get a sham wow, right? And they're selling you a sham wow for $19.99. And you're like, okay, it's a, it's a rag. I don't know if anybody knows what a sham wow is, but it's basically like a cleaning rag. And they're selling it for $20. When I can go to Target, I you know, go to Home Goods, I can get them for $3. Why am I getting a sham wow? Obviously, they show you how great a sham wow is. But then what they do is they say, and for today, you you know don't get just one sham wow, you get two sham wows, and you get the sham wow mop, and you get the special cleaning detergent or whatever it is. So they what they are doing is a value stack. Now they're doing it in a, a kind of cheesy way. You know, it's like for today only, and you get this, and you get that. But we can create that same kind of feeling and value stack when we want to increase the price of our service. So again, in our business, what it looks like is we charge you know, X amount of dollars for a styling evaluation. And when I have a new get acquainted call with a seller, a realtor, an investor, I share with them those little pieces of what gets given to the client. So in our case, our clients get the how-to guides, they get a link to our photo gallery, they get um, moving planners and checklists along with labels that they can customize for their moving boxes, they get an Amazon shopping list of all the moving supplies they could possibly need, boxes, markers, tape, all of it. Um, they also um, receive from us, if they need it, a mood board because we've got some, you know, custom, or some standard templated mood boards that we can send to give them an example of throw pillow colors with window treatments, things like that. So we are putting all of that in there um, for the client, for that price. And so when you say, you know, my, my consultation is X dollars, but I wanna make sure that you understand that not only do I give you all of my intellectual property during that appointment, so I don't hold back anything, after the appointment, here are all the support tools that I send to your client or I send to you to make sure that you are incredibly successful at implementing everything I have just recommended. Even if I never come back to do the hands-on styling, you or your client has every tool in order to get that done for themselves as successfully as possible. So that is how I sell our service and now we charge a premium price and we still have our clients paying for it over and over again. It's very different than having the conversation where you say to the client, oh yes, my styling evaluation is X amount of dollars. And they go, okay, thanks so much. I'll check with my husband and I'll, I'll get back to you, <laughs> right? That's pretty much how that conversation goes. Um, but what I found was once I started sharing with the seller, with the realtor, what we are doing, they, they understand they are getting so much more than even the, the incredibly valuable two hour appointment that we provide for a styling evaluation. So <clears throat> I wanna give you three ways that you can actually start creating your own value stack so that you can get running on that today. Um, so the first one is, actually four, sorry, I forgot I give you a bonus. <laughs> Um, the first is to fulfill that kind of what's in it for me question that people have, right? So it, the reason why all of those tools were created in the first place was because I, I wanted to help my clients get better results. I wanted to answer their questions better and I wanted to answer their questions more effectively and also not have to be on call for them texting me all the time, right? So in a way it was very self-serving, but it was based on what was in it for them, right? 
Um, I'll give you an example for a realtor client or an investor client. When I talk with them, you know, what's in it for them really is like we talk about all the time in the staging industry, um, selling for faster and for more money. That's great. Everybody says that, right? Everybody's got that message. But what I realized was that not only could I help a client make the house look incredible, that I could also, just by using my own social media page, help get more eyes on those listings. So I had always been doing social media posts for our listings. Every listing that we had would get at least a Facebook post and then eventually an Instagram post. And sometimes they get stories depending on what that you know service is like or what that, how, that listing is like. That's incredibly valuable because not only are you helping make the house look amazing, you're also telling them, I'm going to co-promote and be a marketing partner to you on this listing so that we can get it sold even faster. Because at the end of the day, honestly, that is our job. Our job is to help move the sale forward. Our job is to make the house look beautiful in order to do that. But if we can add in just a tiny little bit, we're going to promote these listings on our own on our own social media sites anyway, because we've helped make them look amazing. And we want people to know that we've helped do that. Why not do that for our realtors and tag them in it and all of that? For years, my, my realtors had no idea it was doing it. They Most of them weren't even on social media. Today's agents are much savvier and really appreciate the value of that. Your sellers appreciate the value of that. I've had so many conversations with sellers who are who will, have said that. Like that's an amazing like thing that you do. Thank you so much. So we shout our listings from the rooftop. So that's an example of that. Um, listen and observe the, the sticking points. And, and again, this is kind of why I had created guides and checklists. So one of the things was I'd be in a house, there would be tons of stuff that I'd have to address. I wouldn't have time to do a little hands-on, you know, here's how you style the bookcase. Here's how you style the coffee table. It was so much easier for me to be able to send, oh, here's a pretty style coffee table. Here are the elements. Here, you know, use a tray, use something tall, use something mid-height, use something flat. Um, really very simple to create those things in Canva. Um, you know, if you're good with PicMonkey or Photoshop, you can do them there. But, you know, create something that you can hand to them that helps them succeed more effectively that they see as a huge value and make sure you talk about it, right? Um, Here's a great idea, and this was one that really helped me kind of uh, push, add even more into what we were already giving, and we call it our staging and moving bundle, um, is I went to, to Pinterest and I, I went to Instagram, I mean, uh, not Instagram, Etsy, and I just searched for moving checklists, household guides, things like that, so I could get examples. A lot of those you can download for $5 that will give you just kind of a guideline for, oh, you know, I could probably put this together. You know, there are things like, you know, turn, checklists for like, turn off the cable, turn off the water, turn off the this. You know, those things you can, you can add as a bundle for people, customizable moving labels for each room or something like that. And the cool thing is on Etsy, I have found, because I did this, that if you reach out to somebody who has already created a guide, rather than you spending the time to create that guide, um, you can actually ask them, could you white label it? Would they possibly let you have a license to that where you could um, you know, maybe use your own logo colors or your logo and then use it for, have it for your own use? And I have actually done that where I paid for somebody else's already created template in a way that allows me to share it. I could even sell it because that's what the license allows me to do. So that's a really cool way to get some deliverables done quickly, at least when you're first starting out. Um, if you don't feel like spending the time and money to get those things created. Um, and then the, the last thing is don't be a Lori. <laughs> don't be a me. Talk about them. Talk about what you add, um, what you're adding into your service, right? So make sure that you mention it in, you know, real estate presentations on get acquainted calls with clients. You add it to your service description in um, your on your website. You talk about it on social media. You send it out in emails. Make sure people know that this is what you do. And especially on those get acquainted calls when you're you're at that point where somebody is actively seeking your service. 
you have got to talk that up. You know, like people will call and say, you know, how does it work? And do you do a consultation? And yes, you do a consultation and you charge a premium price for it, whatever that is for you. And you get the two hour appointment. You get a handwritten report if that's what you give. Um, and you get it within X amount of days. Like we actually, our turnaround time, um, we like to get it out within 48 hours so that people know that it's going to come to them quickly. Um, you get social media, you know, th this amount of social media coverage, we whatever it is for you. So I want you to, your homework for this week is to start thinking about how um, you can begin to bring some little value stacked items into your service. And these things should be low cost for you to deliver. They should not involve any more of your time um, to do beyond you know, a minimal amount of time that you can handle. Um, and just add real great value helping people solve problems even more effectively it could be a photo day checklist you know something like that there's so many ideas oh my god there's so many ideas um i just thought of that we could add that to ours calf <laughs> um so anyway start thinking about a value stack and that is a great way for you to transition to increasing your price feeling good about it because you know you're giving so many goodies to people, right, within that price. And people will see that you are not just showing up and walking away afterwards and not continuing to help them. It's huge, huge, huge. Um, so <clears throat> next week, sorry, next week, we're going to be talking about three ways to use your email list to grow your business. And if you want to learn more about the value stack, I go deeper into these topics that this topic and value ladder, like I mentioned earlier, over um, in our staging business boot camp, which is opening for enrollment at the end of this month. And you can get on that wait list and be the first in the know um, at rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash S B to waitlist. I will have that in the, the captions above. I think Kath is going to put that in um, below, but it's rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash SB to waitlist. Um, and if you have missed any of these trainings, they are all over on YouTube, rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash YouTube. You can binge watch them, subscribe over there. Um, let me know that you're here um, and you can see all of the past. I think we've got like 27 trainings in there at this point. So anyway, I hope this was like a fun topic. This is really when you, where you can get to be creative and again, feel good and confident when you go to raise your rates that you are giving like beyond, beyond value, um, whoops, <laughs> um, beyond, beyond value. So anyway, everybody have a great rest of your day. I will see you next week. We'll be talking about email growth strategies to help you grow your business. Okay. Um, have a great one. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.